Okay. Can you all hear me? Just type a Y if you can hear me. <laughs> Fabulous. Awesome. So who's excited for something that's completely out of the box from anything that you've ever done before in many of these cases? This is a this is going to be an, an adventure, if nothing else. <laughs> so I hope you are ready for this. Grace is probably cringing because she knows what I'm like. She knows that I let rip. I'm a shocker. So for those of you who have got lethal sensitivities and conservativeness, be afraid, be very afraid today. Steve Plummer, be very nervous. Okay, so. Yeah, being uncomfortable is great, Grace. Okay, so welcome to the art of Tantra and being bold enough to come. And there's, it's no pun intended. So we have a small little group here, which is good and possibly more as they come on. So let's just get straight on the way. A bit of housekeeping and then a disclaimer. So we will have a recording and have it up there. And what we're also going to do now is give you a disclaimer. So it's going to be pretty explicit and graphic. I'm going to be up front. This is not, this is not for you if you're sensitive in terms of you're a little bit of a G-rated, if you're a little bit of a prude, if you get easily offended around sexual innuendo, because today is going to be all that. It's going to be pretty open. I'm going to be pretty candid. But in saying that, you will also see it's not just all about sex, Tantra. It's actually a lot more than that. And that's one of the things you will see. But just understand today. So Isaac's already offended. <laughs> yep, well, I know Isaac. That's why you're, a, you know, a girly boy. No, I'm just teasing you, mate. So Isaac manages our stuff. So <laughs> Grace writes, give me lots of sex. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where this will go because we've got some very badly behaved individuals on this webinar. So let's just, like I said, let's more than anything, let's just have a bit of a chuckle. Grace is my comrades. Let's just have a bit of a chuckle and let's just enjoy it and get out in the open what really goes on in our inner hearts and minds. So Okay, so like I said, this is a fairly um, not, this is not a webinar for you to come to in any way, shape and form if you're easily offended and oversensitive. So on a serious note, you will actually learn some pretty damn good stuff today. Stuff that I can actually tell you changed my life and my quality of life. And Grace, who's seen firsthand my evolution um, as business partner and knowing me and what I used to be like, um, it's, there's so much to this. It's one of the greatest things you can ever learn when you learn it in its true and pure form and not how it's been butchered by Western society and some of the weird ideas that people have about it. And honestly, I've seen it all. I've seen some of the biggest idiots I've ever met in, 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 my, in the tantric community and what I've been learning. And likewise, I've, seen, I've met some of the most amazing individuals and learned some of the most amazing things. So why it's a hundred times more powerful than your heart and even brain? The difference between monogamy, celibacy and polyamory and why most people are just straight out lying monogamous. In other words, most people are just absolute liars in this area from my experience. And I'll pull my punches on that. People, the biggest thing you learn about Tantra is how much it's about truth in this area and not lying to yourself and to those around you. And it's a little bit scary. It's the one thing I will give you another bit of a gentle warning. Tantra is a scary path when you start to explore it because you'll be forced to face deeper truths within yourself and around you than society actually um, embraces in this area. It's probably one of the most taboo areas and most repressed areas you'll ever come across is sexual energy. So you'll learn about opening your heart without counseling or any form of psychotherapy. You'll learn some of the secrets to master your sexual energy that seriously can improve finances, sales, ideas, creativity, purpose, and even more. Keep in mind that Napoleon Hill in his Think and Grow Rich book wrote a whole chapter on sexual energy and he admitted that that was one he really hesitated about 
but he actually ended up discovering that every major wealthy entrepreneur, this was something that had a very high sexual energy. They had owned it and they learned to master it. You show me someone who's repressed their sexual energy and who struggles with it, and I'll show you someone who has financial challenges in some form. And finally, how to have a more intimate, more aligned, and a better relationship um, with your partner, um, with yourself, and with your family. So that's what you'll really be learning. So the beauty of Tantra is it really is something quite wonderful when you actually start to really explore it. So you will learn about how to have this. So who is ready to go forward and go into what I call the red pill? Who's willing to kind of go in there and after you've heard it all, you're like, yeah, baby, bring it on. Yeah, fabulous. Who here is, who here is shy but excited? Like who here actually, if you admit you are a bit shy. <laughs> Coral definitely, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Isaac shy as <laughs> Isaac Flores, welcome, welcome. I haven't seen you for a while, my friend. Good to see you back. Hope you're surviving the craziness of California right now. So yes, it's okay to giggle now, Steve. So yes, it's a great this is great. This is a really good little thing today. So, like I said, you can actually open your heart a lot through mastering this. And just to give you a little bit of an exciting kind of prelude, I can remember the thing that got me interested in Tantra. Originally, I went for it for a different reason, which I'll explain more throughout the webinar. But I remember when the, the Tantra white tigress goddess, who I sat down with, a master in the area, and what she said to me, as I'm sitting there, you know, pretty much almost naked with her, looking into her eyes, feeling a little bit like silly about being naked and all that kind of stuff and, and my body, um, or very close to it and just sitting very awkwardly. And I remember her telling me, to so opening my heart and I'm thinking, shit, you know, I'm finding it really hard. And I remember the one thing she told me as we got talking and she said to me about the white tigresses and how the lady who'd mentored her was in her 70s or 80s and she looked like she was 30 and her secret had been tantric sexual energy and one of the great secrets of the white tigresses which was um getting a man to ejaculate healthy semen onto their face and rubbing on it so there you go that's a little bit of that got me excited and got me more intrigued with anything else and that got me started so <laughs> And yes, I was very, when I started this up, honestly, I felt ridiculous. I felt stupid. I felt scared. I had to face so many of my shadows. I cannot even comprehend. And you're going to be hearing about quite a lot of my shadows. This will be a very raw open webinar today. So it's seriously in saying that I'm very much going to be say to you, I am not some kind of tantric guru. I am really not. If you've had a world-class tantric white tigress or bikini, or master, they'd probably be horrified listening to what I listening to me today, just because they will see it as so basic. But in saying that, it's my best attempt to get you started in it. And obviously, there's far better people in this area who um, who, who who can teach this than me. So, as you will find after, but I am good at the introduction. That's one thing I'm good at getting people started on basic. Colin says thank you. <laughs> Okay, swallowing it is better. Gosh, this is just, I could see this is going to be an interesting day. <laughs> so I'll be making an offer at the end of today's webinar to join a seven class course. So I'm going to offer a course. I don't know if a single person will want to actually join it. I really don't. But I will offer one and just see if anyone does desire to explore this more. I was crazy enough to go on this journey. I will admit to you, it, you, will, you will face your shadows more in tantrum and just about anything else and your deepest fears it really it you really do especially for men women find tantra a little bit easier once they get into it men it's a horror it really is you will have to face a lot of shit about yourself so well done to the men for coming no pun intended and brave enough to be here so you'll get value one way or the other
Okay, so who this is for? You find it tough to open your heart, express emotionally, developing strong connection with the opposite sex or anyone else. You, you, you have difficulties. You've experiencing challenges in dating, relationships, having a fulfilling sex life, um, even with yourself, through self-pleasure, financial struggles, depression, misalignment with your path, guilt around sex, you've felt that at some stage. You had an abusive or conservative upbringing of some court around sex, um, and desire to break through the restrictions or trauma, and you really desire to gain a lot more confidence around this area. Or you're just simply ready to accelerate your spiritual growth, and Tantra really fascinates the fuck out of you. So if any of these align with you and you think, yep, just type in the number in the chat, just so I can get a little bit of experience. It's shocking. I'm getting terrible comments from the panelists here. Oh, you guys are naughty, naughty people. <laughs> okay, guys, who's going to be bold? For me, those are three. Christine, one, two, three. Yep, Jason, one, two, three. Okay, I love honesty. This is one to be very honest. Ed, four, I can't get hard. <laughs> Gosh, come on, guys. Honestly. So, yep, who's willing? It's good that people are honest. Grace, too, in my previous marriage. Go away, Grace. <laughs> we used to be married, by the way. You can see why I got rid of it. Um, yeah, you had an abusive or conservative upbringing and desire to break through the restrictions. So if you're bold enough, this area, well done. I would say number two was very much me. Um, and a little bit of one when I started this journey, and definitely three. I was, I was two and three quite strongly, and a little bit of one, but not so much the one for me. So that's my attempt at honesty for you. Um, but yep, yeah, well done, everyone. So, okay, does any of this sound like you today? You've had guilt around sex. It's stuff that people might not see. You may walk around, like you feel really confident around it, but you actually have. You've had lack of energy to have sex for a long period of time, whether it's with yourself, with others. You find you have little desire to masturbate, have sex. You find your sexual energy is extremely, extremely low. Yep, well, yep, Colin, great. Well done. That, mate, I had a lot of guilt around sex, extreme guilt around sex. You've closed your heart to intimacy and you just don't know how to open it anymore. You're like, you're craving it and you just feel shut down like a fucking lock. And you hate that feeling, you really do. This was how I felt. You know you've had some stuff that may have happened, you know that it's all your perception, but still, it's like why as my heart feels so shut? If anyone can relate to that, just type a why. Yeah. Jason, yep, it's especially for men. Yep, Kaylin, Sheldon, yep, it's a big thing. And it can be a very painful, frustrating thing. <laughs> Grace from previous husband, go away. Um, you struggle with self-expression in some form. You have a real struggle to express your sexuality. You, you know, when you see people dancing and doing sexual movements with their hips or moving around, there's part of you that feels awkward around it. You feel guilt around it. You feel like, oh God, you know, why are they like that? You know, um, you have a struggle to express that, which really, by the way, blocks your creativity and your expression and your dance and your ability just to dance and sing and let go. Now, here's a big one. And I certainly have I've had that. And still, every now and again, I have this one. Performance anxiety as a man with a preconceived expectation as to what you believe you should do, like whether it's make love like a porn star, to be able to be hard at will, um, to be able to keep your woman satisfied. And deep down you feel a lot of shame when you do. And sometimes you even start secretly resorting to porn or fantasy just to keep away from the real truth of how you feel. So. Anyone relate to that one? <laughs> Gosh, the comments. <laughs> yeah, Isaac Plummer, he's a one minute wonder according to him. <laughs> you have no idea guys what I'm getting in these secret chats. It's just shocking. 
Um, yeah, but as a man, in all seriousness, I, it's definitely something which I have experienced a bit of, performance anxiety. And I'd be surprised if men and even women have not had that. You've experienced imminent as a man or your partner has. You've experienced abuse or sexual trauma at some level. And at one stage, even 30 years ago or 20 odd years ago, 20, something like 35% of women had been sexually abused. My feeling is that's probably actually higher than that, more like 40, 45%. Um, and just that the women who admit it and open to it. So it's a really big one. So I'm, I don't know if there's any women brave enough to admit that one, but drift by the way can really shut down your chakras or over activate your chakras quite a bit when you go through this. Um, in terms of over activating or under activating or sexual, shutting down your heart or whatever. So nine, at one stage, I think it was somewhere in the 90, in, in about the 80 to 90% of women admitted in a, in a secret study, but they'd never had a really decent proper orgasm. It was some insanely high number who actually has difficulties in struggling with this. So again, anyone, can you, anyone relate to any of this? You don't have to be specific if you don't want. Any of you relate to any of this? I got no problem, by the way, being very open in this area myself, but I appreciate for some people this is good. Can you, can you relate to any of this? Yep, there's a few people. Right. Yep. <laughs> Grace says to me that man can't find a clit. <laughs> it's terrible. You have a premature ejaculation issue and feel shame about it. And that was actually why I first went for Tantra. I will openly say that because I was having at times I was, I was often not going up and getting frightened about it, not realizing the causes of that. And there's actually many causes why that can happen for a man. It doesn't necessarily mean they've got a problem. And I was having issues with premature ejaculation where I couldn't control. Now, this is actually more of a problem than, than people realize because for men, you actually feel a bit of shame and it actually um, except, except continue. It makes performance anxiety worse. For a woman, they feel frustrated and unsatisfied. And they've proven in David Data's teaching in the way of superior man, that when women's man continually pre prematurely ejaculates, subconsciously they lose trust in their man and they start to feel an internal disappointment and lack of trust. So these are the kind of things that actually start happening in that area. So if you experience that in any way, shape or form, or basically you're, or you're a woman and you have a partner who does this, this is something which can be a real challenge. You feel a real disconnect between your heart and sexual organs. Um, and you know what I mean? You just sort of feel the two are almost locked off from each other when really the two are meant to um, work together equally. Your creativity feels blocked and you feel hard to have ideas and yet, we're really going into the dark, into the darkness here today and what we're doing. So who actually feels uncomfortable and feels their dark shadows really being stirred up here? I can feel it happening. Anyone here? Who actually feels it? Their shadows actually being triggered a little bit, just in the way that they're there. You notice them, you're okay with it, but you're feeling a bit like, whoa, got a few little things coming up here, which are a bit sort of scary. Yeah, so few people admitting it and brave enough to do it. So it's great. This was one of the things I was taught in my first session. I had to go right into my darkness in this area and really face it. And I will say to you, it's probably one of the hardest things for me to break. Me even doing this webinar today is a big breakthrough for me. And I'll tell you what, my biggest fear around Tantra and around sex was um, a few of you know my family and I grew up in a very conservative religious family and a family that had a big taboo around sex. I was told by my mum at 13 that masturbation was very dirty when she caught me doing it. So I had years of shame and guilt around that area. Whenever I do it, I'd feel like I was doing something badly wrong. That carried over into when I got married. It carried over into that. And really it's only been probably in the, since starting Tantra and over the last 10, 12 years, and even it took me quite a number of years of Tantra before I fully felt that was gone for me. And I embraced and enjoyed that. And actually saw um, self-pleasure as a powerful tool 
to awaken sexual energy and move it through my body and, and reconnect my heart and sexual chakras within myself so that then I could express that freely with a partner, with a woman, with anyone else. And many people are trying to have a, a, a fulfilling sexual experience of a partner and they don't even have it with themselves. And that's one of the first things I, had to, I learned about Tantra. So I grew up in a very conservative upbringing. I, the, doing this webinar, I was terrified of my mum and dad finding out, or my mum especially, and my, and my cousins who were very much um, finding out that I was in any way polyamorous, which I was at one stage very strongly, um, you know, where I would go around and have the time of my life. I was terrified about my views and even doing anything like this. I, I was like my little secret shame I, I hid. So for me to do this now, I've come right out in the open and probably the first time I've ever actually done this. So it's a really, really big one. So this is what many men and what many people actually face in this area. So like I said, I've just decided to bring, out, bring these out and really go into this a little bit more. And the blockages around your sexual energy chakra Ironically, and he's not a Tantra teacher in any way, shape or form, but Raymond Grace, when he was teaching, said many people are unable to move into the miraculous. And he said, because they're blocked in their sexual chakra. And he explained to me, he said, he explains at a workshop at a hundred, that literally the sexual chakra is a hundred times more powerful than even the heart chakra. And of course, when you actually study many secret societies, and this is the dark side of it, where it's misused, but in some secret societies, why they do pedophilia and abuse is because they like to get young children because of their pure energy and harvest the power of the sexual energy to increase their wealth and increase their control and their power. This is actually what happens. So there was a very dark part of this, and which is well known. In many satanic cults, that's why they do sexual orgies um, to, with priestesses at temples. And it's done because they know this power and they use it in the dark side and the dark way. Now, there is obviously a tantric way of doing this, which is a much pure, which is a pure way where you can learn to activate the power of your sexual energy and master that. And believe you me, you meet someone who's incredible at sales, I'll guarantee you that person has got a very high, well, um, well harnessed sexual energy. Because that's the magnetism that actually attracts people to you and attracts people around you. So, if you don't take the steps to fix this and acknowledging this, you miss out on the power of your sexual energy and you stay blocked in that area and it does actually affect your ability to manifest or move in higher power. And I will openly tell you that when I, one of the things I even did for a little while last year was as I went into deeper realms spiritually, I did go through a period where I pulled away a bit from my sexual energy. And I, no and I noticed as time went on how it actually was starting to affect my sales and also even affect my ability to manifest. Since I've started to reconnect, especially with my sexual energy more and more in recent times, I've been amazed at how the power has increased. And often at night, I will do energy and move the sexual energy through my body to awaken it and awaken my chakras and awaken my brain chakra. I can remember the Tantra White Tigress who first taught me said that if you actually, there's actually nine levels of orgasm, for example, taught in what a Tantra White Tigress is and the highest one, what's called the Valley Orgasm, actually takes you out of your body and you experience what's called a state of Samadhi or Samadhi. And Samadhi is where you literally move into a state of consciousness or union with source where you feel one with all things and you no longer feel in your body and you move beyond space and time. Now I've experienced um, bits of that. I've met, um, I've met um, women who've told me that once or twice they've had them. I don't know if anyone's had that, but when you move to a level of orgasm, it's so intense and so profound, you actually, your soul or spirit temporarily leaves your body. So there is potential in this area, but so profound and so powerful. No. Okay, so who's enjoying this so far? Or certainly getting getting some interesting insight. Who's finding it quite fascinating?
yeah, it's great. It does. It opens your heart. Um, that's one of the things, for example, why it's, it's a really interesting thing. And I've generally found now, like, unless I, I find, for example, myself these days, I wouldn't enjoy sex with someone unless there's actually a strong tantric connection. So, um, fortunately with my current partner, she's got a very open heart chakra, which makes it a bit easier. But this is an area where for many women, especially they shut off their heart chakra and you'll learn more about why that is such a problem. So, Colin, I'm interested in multiple orgasm and no ejaculation. Yeah, it's fabulous. Honestly, it's like, um, for me these days, I take that for granted, but there was a stage for years I couldn't do that. So it's a, it, it is. And when you learn to master that, Colin, and, and you the power you feel as a man is quite incredible. So it affects all areas of your life, such as your health. It attracts your ability to attract finances and sales. In having a fulfilled sex life of yourself and self-pleasure or partner. Poly relationships of real intimacy with yourself and others. Um, having had a secret addiction to porn, which affects your beliefs on sex. This is a big one I find, especially with men, um, especially with the increase in porn and sexual stuff online, is that what happens is subconsciously, um, men, as, but men and women start to get an idea of sex and what it is, which goes into your programming. And I found even with women, for example, many women who I had sex with have, um, it's like when I don't come, they feel bad and they said, aren't I satisfying you? And they get anxious and get really, really worked up. And that was one of the things when I eventually realized that no, unless a woman really gets tantra and is keen to explore it, or at least open themselves up, that's just not a path I want to go. And I realized this quite a few years ago. So it's really, it's really something that the secret addiction to porn, which is happening, and even for women too, just the whole idea of what it is. And women especially, when they start to go too much into what's called their sexual energy and chop their heart off, they start to move into more masculine energy. And equally, when men go too much into their heart and shut off their sexual chakra, they start going too much into their feminine energy. And I'm sure you've all noticed today how men have become more and more feminine and women have become more and more masculine. And in fact, in America, there was a study done which actually showed that there was a great concern how many corporate women in their forties who'd become very masculine, um, you know, very, very corporate um, women who were very masculine, um, that they actually were developing hair. And I've met women who've admitted this to me, they developed more body hair. There's been women developing mustaches, their breasts have shrunk, all kinds of stuff. So it's a pretty big thing. And there's so many issues. Can any of you relate to that? Like men who you think, yep, you, you just know you'd like to be more masculine or women, you would love to be more feminine and really step into that feminine energy. And who can relate to what I'm saying here and know, and know that and know that porn has had probably some impact on you without realizing. Yep. Yep, Helen, yep. Isaac, definitely, yep. Aaron, Sheldon, yep, no, nah, it's a big one. And it's something that when you master this in your life or start to own this sort of stuff, it gets really good. <laughs> Grace was asking me about where you get these images. Um, Grace, not all the images came from there. Like I said, I deliberately am putting images in there to challenge and help people feel uncomfortable without getting too fast. Isaac wants to get that testosterone back. Yeah, look, when a man shuts off their sexual energy, um, Isaac, their testosterone starts to drop. I can remember a big wake up call for me was when I got a blood test and my testosterone was well below average and that was a big shock for me. So I started doing things like eating more red meat, more exercise, doing more stuff, but yeah, definitely getting my sexual energy flowing a whole lot better. They've proven with men, for example, that men's testosterone drops significantly when they, and you'll laugh at this, but it's true, if they sit too long with a woman being emotional and crying all the time, because that actually starts to lower their testosterone. If they don't have enough sex, um, number two is another reason, they just don't have enough sex either with themselves or move that sexual energy. That also drops down testosterone as well. So 
all this kind of stuff. So having more sex is really good for a man. You'll learn also in this webinar that, for example, that for a man, the less they orgasm, the better. For a woman, the more they orgasm, more. And one of the things I learned in Tantra was how to internally orgasm. Now that's exciting. And that's when, that, that's the secret, by the way, to learning to control yourself from coming as a man, because you learn to control yourself and let the orgasm explode in you internally. And when women can learn to do that, oh boy, it's good. So, yeah, I mean, so it's great, exciting stuff, really good stuff. Grace says cosmic orgasm. Yeah, cosmic orgasm is spectacular. And what does tend to happen, I will add, is as time goes on in your tantric journey, you start to move beyond the physical more and more, and you start to experience it more cosmic. And you actually do start to experience what's called higher cosmic orgasms, where literally you experience explosive orgasms within you without even having a partner, just purely being connected to source. The ancient Lemurian race, who are profound healers, became so good at Tantra, that they actually learned to get their partners pregnant without actually physical intercourse. And that's, that's true. They, they got so good at it, they learned to activate each other's energy. So Lemurians got to the point where they preferred astral sex to actual physical sex. And um, so I find these days too, more and more, astral sex I'm fine is, and cosmic sex is becoming fulfilling for me more and more. That, in fact, David Dayton, his way of superior man, says once you go on a deep sexual journey um, with yourself and then with a partner, it comes a point when you realize that there's levels beyond that and you're no longer fulfilling and you start moving into cosmic orgasm where you actually orgasm by connecting with the divine mother or the divine masculine. It's quite profound. So the art of Tantra is a fun way to do this. And believe you me, once you start on this journey, it's hard to go away from it. So, okay, so who's enjoying this so far? Getting some really, really fascinated with this and getting some good fulfillment with this. Yeah. Awesome, yep, all the men are loving it. Six men, ah, oh, good, there's some women too. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. I'm actually so pleased that I've always wanted to share on this what I've gone through, but I just never have. Number one, I've been too scared to because what people would think of me. That's been my last little shadow to let go of in that area and with my family and others, and which I don't care anymore. And because I know how much it helps. So, a little bit about me just before we go on. I've been doing spiritual work for years and years and years, and I will admit, the thing that was a hindrance in my spiritual progress, which when I was younger, I had powerful experiences with God, with my own life, was this kind of conflict. And where rather than dealing with my sexual energy, I was always trying to stop it. I can remember when I was on an intense spiritual path doing healing work in my 20s, I would have this deep inner guilt around sex. Um, I was a virgin until I was 26, literally, um, when I got married because of my beliefs and my teachings. I was always having these strong fantasies and being these addictions to porn that were kind of drawing me. And then I feel terribly guilty about it and stop it. I then had a powerful experience um, that gave me the power and less and less I was able, I was addicted to it. And that's how I broke through my addictions and all that stuff. But still, although I broke through my addictions and grew heavily in my spiritual path, this shadow was still lurking in the background. And it really hit me when I hit 40 um about 10 odd years ago it really hit me and that was the moment when i actually realized that i've got to face this shadow and that was what got me actually started on tantra because i remember when i first heard about it everything in me told me i've got to look into this and i was very scared to do this i will openly say that very scared because i knew i was going against almost everyone around me and even at the time grace who i was married with she was very kind of resistant to it as well, where she's not now, she's probably worse than anyone. So she's a shocker. So, um, and sending me terrible comments the whole time. So major spiritual works and teachings. So yeah, it was a really big turning point for me and going down, having experienced all the different sexual paths from celibacy to monogamy to polyamory, which basically means multiple partners and also learning some truths about men and women. 
So, of course, I founder of Awakening Within. I founded Wealthsafe as well, which is a financial investment and business group, which many of you know me through. We have the Awakening Within, which helps people to shift their consciousness. City Awakening, which is a much higher advanced teaching group. Spoken internationally at various places as well. And these are my three young testosterone-filled males who no doubt are listening to this webinar with great joy and probably plan to implement every single thing which I actually say. So, and of course, Isaac Plummer will immediately say if they're able to, no doubt, and give them some shit about it before they can get it on him. So, yeah, look, my own story was it really did help my spiritual awakening quite massively. And it was the... <laughs> crap, oh, damn, this lock. <laughs> yeah, there's actually some countries that are actually allowing single people, um, in the exception to lockdown, to have a consort companion to come to their house who can live with them to fulfill their sexual needs and companionship. So, <laughs> a bit of a classic. Some countries have actually done that. And Melbourne are talking about doing it at the moment. Sure. Yeah, so they are. So, my own story, it really helped my spiritual awakening quite massively. Like, it really did. I managed to, what I found was that it opened my consciousness because I didn't realize how important sexual energy was. One of the things that helped me was my struggle and conflict had been around my upbringing in the Bible because I believed the Bible and still love the Bible, but I didn't understand the esoteric deeper meanings and activation principles behind it. And once I actually realized that much of the teachings in the Bible were very esoteric, and not linear as I'd been taught. As an example, the prohibition against adultery wasn't actually saying, oh no, if you ever do this or, for, or have sex outside marriage. Marriage in the way it is now is a man-made invention, it really is. Osho, one of the greatest Tantra teachers of all time, openly said, but he said true marriage is of the heart. It's an inner union. So for example, you may not be legally married to someone, but if you have a really intense inner connection and a sexual bonding with them, you have a form of energetical, spiritual or tantric marriage. And in fact, Osho taught, taught his disciples that the worst thing they could do is get ma married legally, unless there was a very good business or political reason or social acceptance reason to do it. He said, because a legal marriage actually takes the heart and the union out of it and gets you more into the kind of um, expectation, feeling trapped and obligation, which tends to hit people. So he, 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 he strongly discouraged his disciples from getting married under any kind of state law. He, he encourages disciples to actually develop and explore a tantric union that will, and actually develop an inner connection because he says it's far more powerful. So far more powerful. Openly said, don't get legally, physically married. Get tantrically married. Get an inner union with someone. That is the true... And, and, Come on, everyone, we would all agree. Come on, no pun intended. But the, all of you would much rather have an inner union. And in fact, Osho and even my own, one of my own teachers in the area said to me, true adultery is where you go against your heart. Like, let's say you're married to someone who you have no sexual desire for anymore. You two are, are just living with each other because you just feel like you have to for the kids. When deep down you have an inner sexual union of desire for someone else, at the very least you're being dishonest with yourself in the astral realm. And on a higher level, you're not facing your deep inward truth and you actually are committing a form of adultery. You've either got to resolve the issue quick smart with your current partner or face the truth that you are committing a form of adultery against yourself and you're moving against your higher heart. So yeah, this is, that's why I said this is challenging stuff. Because no doubt some of you um, in your marriages or relationships or whatever else know deep down that this relates to you. Or even if you're single, this relates to you as well and that you're, you're shutting off part of yourself. And that's what made this very hard because Grace and I, and look, I'll share this because the good thing with Grace and I, we're very open. We, our marriage was overall very, very good. Like the reason that we're still very close, even though we've divorced, is because we actually got on really well. We had a like-minded spiritual values, the same values as kids. We we're very close friends. We helped each other through very, very tough times in our 20s and 30s. So when I started to open up, my biggest guilt that I felt was, on, was around Grace. And sure enough, she wasn't particularly impressed with it at the time because she'd had her own experiences around sex and intimacy, which is up to her if she's willing to share them. But 
Um, and if she wants to come on at any stage, Grace, just let me know in the private chat and share because it's always powerful when you have, you know, a man and a woman sharing. So if you feel like it, feel free to. But um, basically, yeah, the whole idea was that she had her challenges and shadows in this area. So it was a very challenging thing for me because when I started to realize that we had brilliant connections in, in, in most areas, but my truth was I wanted to be polyamorous. I didn't want to be monogamous and I'd been lying to myself. Now, that was challenging beyond belief because of the devastation I felt for her, fear around my kids, how that would affect them, everything. And in the end, I thought the only way to do this, I've got to face the truth, face my shadows, be truthful about this. And fortunately, Grace, even though she had a lot of pain and challenges around her, was willing to face her shadows as well. And the one thing that had helped is we had always talked about legally divorcing because we saw that the whole state law was a bunch of shit. And we talked about divorcing under legal law and being married under common law. So in ancient times, by the way, kings and emperors understood this really well. That's why many kings, they were married for political reasons or, for, or to a queen who they had a really good business connection with where they maybe had minimal sex, but then they had a young concubine or someone that they saw or a few different concubines who awakened their sexual energy in other ways. So there was many kings and emperors who did this. In other words, it was more accepted in that, in that time than it is today. Today, many women see that, for example, that they see it as somehow they get very insecure. They see it as a, a slight against them and somehow there's something wrong with them. And equally for many men, they feel incredible guilt and then they shut off that side of themselves because they feel bad for their partner. And both parties actually lose out from that situation. Whereas if both parties are really truthful with each other, the man will open up his sexual side a lot more, be, will own it, and a woman will actually realize that a, a man's natural thing, which they found in a natural animal human body, men are naturally, for example, desire to explore and hunt, women naturally desire to bond and nest. Now that's a general rule, I will openly say that, I'm not stereotyping, but that is what they found in every kind of science is the case. So my, it really helped facing my deeper truths with my spirituality. And it was one of the reasons why Grace and I stayed close because we actually realized that we had a fabulous kind of inner tantric union in terms of business and kids. It just wasn't the romantic or sexual anymore. And we were able to make that move and shift into that. So that's how we were able to do that and how it helped my spiritual awakening and get me to a deeper connection with my own truth. Like I said, I still can't believe I'm sharing this openly on a public webinar, but here I am doing it. So sharing some of the stuff that I never thought I would share on a public webinar. I'll be frank with you. I just still, I'm, I, I'm sharing it, but I can't believe I'm hearing myself saying it. So yeah, look, I face some of my deeper shadows and I'm still, and still when you face this and bring this out, you are going against the mainstream. A great Tantra teacher who I learned from called Baba Dez openly said that he said, when he first taught this kind of stuff, he got so much flack. He, he actually got his temple shut down, his tantric temple at one stage um, by or governments, by everyone from complaints about him because he came out and said he was teaching like polyamory and all this kind of stuff. So it was a really big, um, so opening this kind of stuff out, believe you me, when you do this, I do warn you, you, can, you certainly start to face some shadows and where you're fortunate is that in today's time of consciousness on the planet, there is more awareness and more openness to this that is coming about compared to when I started this journey where it was still a very taboo and a very kind of secret community in Perth. So yes, it's quite amazing. Who's feeling inspired but also challenged by this? Yep, it's Collins inspired, Isaac, Aaron, great. Jason, it's a double-edged sword. Oh, it is, it's a double-edged sword. Women, by the way, I will emphasize, get, get Tantra really quickly. It was why the Tantra bikinis and goddesses who I worked with used to be fascinated with me because they said, you're very sensitive. You actually get this really well compared to most men. They said, we find men find this really hard. They said men, when they go this path, either struggle with it or, or my other experiences, and I make women laugh and I say this to them, 
is they turn into what I call the beard, the new age man with the beard who walks around with a simple smile with love in his face, telling everyone just to love each other. That's the other thing that often happens to men with cancer. They just turn into these absolute gooses who walk around with this beard, smiling and joining some men's club. And that's not what Tantra is about either, by the way. Um, it's certainly not. So let's explore Tantra a little bit more. So all I can say is Ed, Isaac, um, don't, don't go and get a beard and don't go around smiling and start a men's club, please. So what does Tantra work? So what Tantra actually is, sorry. Real intimacy with a partner. So this is the other thing. And I can remember there's a couple of um, healers I work with, Sahaja Springer and Shazar Robinson. And I know quite a few of you know them. I remember Sh Sahaja was the first one and Shazar, they challenged me. They said, you realize that in deeper Tantra um, knowledge, you can have a deep love for more than one person, don't you? And I remember stopping and thinking, shit, because I remember I would notice that, but I would often feel a very deep connection with a couple of women. But of course, the women would find that very hard to comprehend. They would see it as a cheating, as a disloyalty, because a lower feminine fear, jealous nature would come in. And I thought to myself, it's true. Because men do have that ability to do that, especially even some women do. More so men than women, but men, you know what I mean. The common thing that a man says when he's, when he's caught cheating on that label bit with, with someone else, is he says, look, babe, I still love you. And most of the time, the man actually does mean that. He actually means that. Um, he still does actually love that, that woman. He's just, his natural male instinct has kicked in and he's looking for a meal outside the house for a sexual exploration elsewhere. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily does it. That's one form of expression. Another form is just to own it. But I can remember one of my friends who I knew, who her husband, she caught him actually, you know, having on a chat group um, with a girl and, oh, she was furious and he was like walking around like a guilt ridden, told off boy and kept saying, look, but I do love you. And I said to her, I actually believe him. And she said, really, why? And I explained all this to her and she went very quiet and she goes, I actually think you're right. Because she said, I know he loves me and that's why I can't understand it. And I said, well, what you don't understand men. I said, men are different to women. I said, him doing that doesn't necessarily mean, number one, he's going to do it in the first place. And number two, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with you. It's just he's exploring a different form of energy. That's all he's doing. And she kind of got it, but didn't fully own it. So eventually they separated. But interesting, she, she kept going from man to man after that. One thing that Dr. John Martini teaches, when he teaches on these areas, he goes, any area that you don't address or deal with eventually will come back to haunt you or in other words you have to keep dealing with it so women who are always seeing that a man that they're with is a problem and i can remember that they will never really shift forward i can remember with myself my turning point was when i realized i had three problematic relationships in a row and the only common factor in that was me i was the problem not the women i could sit there and say this woman was toxic and that woman was a bitch and that one was this which i would do and say how I don't trust women at all. But I realized, and I used to say that stuff, I just don't trust women. Eventually I realized that I was the issue, but it all went back to my mum and the way I'd been brought up, a deep mistrust I developed with women, a deep toxic mistrust in the feminine, and ultimately a deep toxic mistrust within myself and my ability to handle myself in the presence of the feminine energy. And that was a painful moment for me. I cried my eyes out like a baby. I went through a lot of work. And it's one of the reasons why these days I can easily express myself and be confident to express my truth with the feminine. That is, by the way, why so many women, there's this old saying a, that treat them mean, keep them keen. Now, in other words, women attract to that bad alpha guy. And the reason why is women like it when a man can handle their feminine energy and be not afraid to tell them off and be in their power with them. And many men have lost that. So all parties have lost out from this deal. So real intimacy of a partner is what Tantra is. And that's one form of intimacy. So you can try that. So a few of you can go home tonight and give this position a shot with your partners if you want. Uh, Grace, I'm sure you could find someone. Just go online and go on Tinder, see if you can find someone. Um, real intimacy of a partner. Real intimacy with yourself, most important. The first thing I learned in Tantra 
was having real intimacy with yourself was the most important first and foremost and learning to love yourself this was a thing i learned and i was taught that you shouldn't actually have physical penetration with a partner until you first built built a deep energetic connection first so that's the first thing you got to do and that's why in tantra i can remember when i learned with a tantra goddess that we didn't actually um and i had a tantric goddess partner for a while i remember we didn't actually engage in physical um stuff until we spent a fair bit of time on the energetic side of things so real intimacy with yourself now what tantra is actually not okay so tantra is real intimacy of the heart it's not you suddenly going oh yeah i'm a tantra wild porn star and getting this idea that sex suddenly turns you into a raging maniac a porn superstar or that suddenly you end up going into the um yeah you end up in some temple looking like a weirdo as a man with a beard or as a woman you become a weirdo many of the women in the tantric community are actually women who've been sexually abused who go there to try and seek healing and end up becoming bigger weirdos than before they went into it so tantra is really in its purest form what the indians taught it's more about expressing the heart and opening the heart and balancing the chakras first and foremost and recognizing sex is simply a tool and by the way owning your dark side sexually is equally an important part of tantra like for example i would often have fantasies as a guy of reasons or secret gangbangs and all that nice to do everything to kill those thoughts off and once i started owning those thoughts and embracing them and even doing things and i'll say this and i i shudder when i say it but i've been i remember um sorry guys setting these i'm going to show you in this one grace came with me a few times to swingers club to look into what it was like i've been a few times on my own i went into all that stuff i just thought fuck this if i'm going to do this those who know me know i don't do things in half measures i thought i've got to do this properly so i just thought why this i'm going to do it so i went to some swingers club met the weirdest people you'll ever meet in your life um you know did some of the strangest stuff you'll ever get um oh, is that the man yeah so yeah, I just went to some swingers clubs. I watched people doing all kinds of the wildest sexual stuff you'll ever get in, in, in there. I even got involved on a few occasions. I mean, I really let rip. You know, I thought, blow this. If I want to fucking do this, man, I want to do this properly. So, I want to do this properly. So, absolutely. So, swingers club, uh, I absolutely went to. I thought, yeah, why not? Um, tried quite a few different things. The only thing I had no interest in trying was gay sex. I'll be, oh, that was the one thing I'd like to forget that. Um, so, <laughs> oh, Grace is sending me some classic comments um, right now. She said I had 10 guys first time. <laughs> yeah, so let's just say the great thing about exploring these different things was I also found what I liked and what I didn't like. That was the big thing I found. For example, I found that I very quickly lost interest in casual, detached sex with someone who I had no connection with. That was fun for a little bit. I quickly lost interest in that. So I really let, so once, so the funny thing was, once I'd gone through all of that sort of stuff, I became a lot more, and these days I'm actually very controlled with my sexual thoughts compared to most men I know. I have a very good control in the area, mainly because I know what's fantasy and what's reality. I know the things I'd like to explore. I know the things I enjoy. And a lot of things now, I know what I don't want. Because I learned that Tantra is really all about energy. And I've learned that the energy is the absolute most important. So, <laughs> Grace Gangbang is great, far out. She's really playing up. So I think you guys have got to pull her in the lion, please. Isaac and Edward, you guys have got to show some maturity here. But yeah, so John D. Martini actually said that. He goes, you, so, you show someone who openly talks about sex, you'll actually find that person is probably the least actively sexual person that you'll meet because they've got it out of his system and they've got the best control of it. And that's actually true in my case. I'm a lot of talk, but in real life, these days, after going through my little breakout session and going, and I remember the, remember the first time, by the way, I went to an adult sex shop. I was like a guilty child. I literally got out of my car, I was looking around carefully. I, or I had like a little um, hood over my head and I snuck in there terrified. 
was running around, was, was thinking any minute the woman was going to tell me off and I bolted out of there after two minutes. So that actually happened. So there, I'm sure some of you can relate to this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Grace says, remember when she came home for a porn movie to try and break that out of me and I was shitting myself. So yeah, it really, once I, once I broke through those, those barriers, I learned with Tantra that yeah, it means web or to weave energy. It's about enlightenment to transform the sexual and spiritual planes by getting deeply meditative, um, spontaneous and intimate sex. The greatest thing about it is that I learned to open my heart chakra and experience far, far, far greater intimacy than I'd ever experienced before in my sex life, in myself, in everything. So it really is quite an amazing thing and the best journey you can ever go on. It's been going for over 5,000 years. It's a very slow form. Um, and this is the thing with Tantra. Tantra is like a slow cooker. Okay. It's not a fast food, quick two minutes stir fry. That's the best way my Tantra teacher taught me to know the difference. Tantra is a slow cooker. Now that's why women love Tantra and they become addicted to it once they experience it because most women today experience the two minute wonders, you know, or the 10 minute men, the men who just go in there, they get inside, they go for their life. And then because they orgasm, they think to themselves, Oh man, did you enjoy that? And the woman's standing there and going, um, not really, um, not really. I'm sure some of you women know what I'm talking about. You're going, that actually wasn't all that fun at all. And you probably go, oh yeah, yeah, that no, was okay. And deep down you think, oh God, that was shocking. And so many women, as a result, they, 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 they lose the ability to orgasm. They kind of shut off to sex and they just lose interest in it. I mean, anyone willing, any men or women willing to relate, at least at some stage you've been men, a two minute wonder or women, you kind of know what I mean. And you've had, very unfulfilling sex from a man or for men at times you just felt haven't quite um, met your needs. Not necessarily not meaning to. I'll openly tell you I've experienced both ends of the spectrum. I've been a two minute wonder and I've um, experienced it the other way too. And I'm sure women have. Yeah, you can experience, you can send it to us privately as panelists because I know some people are a bit reluctant. Told you, I told you it would be challenging. You have to admit, I told you this would be raw. I told you that you'd have to face your shadows. Who here is feeling distinctly uncomfortable right now and distinctly challenged? Nah, Grace said this is excellent. Great. So you're all still here? Okay. So it was now one thing I learned in Tantra training was um, Helen loves it. <laughs> awesome, Helen. Nobody knows Isaac's still here. So do you, I'll tell you something. Um, in ancient temples, in some cultures, they actually used to run classes, the, the female tantric priestesses, to teach the young men and women to properly self pleasure to become good at having sex with themselves. And in other words, I actually, I actually remember having a chat with my own teenagers and explain, and they were quite shocked at the idea that, Oh, really? You don't just come straight away. I'm like, no, nope. I said, you gotta try and learn to practice holding it. And they were like, that's really hard. And I'm like, yeah, because the art and Tantra, the first thing I was taught to do was learn to self pleasure and be able to build myself to the point of orgasm and then kind of draw back and then do it again and then draw back. And when I first did it, I mean, it was so frustrating because often I'd get up there and then I'd ejaculate really quickly and go, oh, fuck, this is so annoying. And she encouraged me, but I came to the point where I could literally go for an hour and build the energy and not come. I got to the stage where I could do it for two hours without coming and build it right up to intense orgasm and pull it back. It actually brings incredible pelvic strength as well in your transverse abdominis. You build better strength in your perineum and in your, in your lower abdomen muscles because you need very strong pelvic muscles as a man to be able to withhold ejaculation and be able to hold your cum. That's one of the big secrets is strong that as well. So 
yeah, Colin, I've got five orgasms, I'm not calm, but lost the ability a few weeks. No, you haven't lost it. You're just out of practice, Colin. So you'll, you'll be fine, mate. I, I've gone through stages like that. And one of the things to realize is that with a, to stimulate your sexual chakra is that it's very different to stimulating the heart chakra. A heart chakra is stimulated by imaginations like, you know, oh, that girl is so nice to be with, or that guy, and you imagine being out at a picnic and you're just sitting there talking and holding hands and looking at the ocean and giving each other a cuddle. And if you ask most women, many women, if they like a guy, that's the kind of thoughts they're thinking, or lying in bed, having a chat with them and just cuddling up to them and just talking. And if you ask them, although they may have a few sexual fantasies, most of their fantasies are more like that. Or they imagine going out for a guy and having a meal or just hanging out and just watching a movie and what it would be like. Where men, for example, by contrast, they'll be imagining their the girl coming up to them, taking the, taking their clothes off, being naked and then doing some wild, you know, riding them or then doing some wild doggy from behind or doing it when, when their best friend joins in as well. And now that's the kind of fantasies that goes on in most men's mind. Now, women find this almost abhorrent, some women to kind of accept that, especially married men, even more so. And they'll often meet their wife's, you know, best friend, and they imagine that, you know, that their best, that they have this kind of fantasy that the best friend drops over one day and they, and they have the time of their life with them. Now, like I said, I'm bringing out the wildest stuff that really goes on. And come on, you, come on, you naughty men, admit it. You know this goes on. And women actually deep down know it goes on too. I find women are very aware. They, they can read when men are thinking sexually, by the way. They know when you are. They walk down the streets and they can feel it. They know, I find most women know what men are like. So, um, yeah, Sheldon's admitting it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we are, we're, this is exactly what goes on in our mind. And when you actually own it, you can release it so easily. That's why I just don't have hang-ups in this area now because I'm doing it. So now that you're getting a bit excited right now, um, just a few Tantra fundamentals I'm gonna move through now. So big difference between men and women I wanna cover here. Men and, and men, if you get this, it will change your life. And women, if you get this, it will change your life and your partner. So we've had a bit of fun, but this is a actually serious little tip that will help you, okay? Men are naturally yang, which is hot, doing energy, okay? So heat, doing. Women is naturally yin, which is cool, receiving, okay? So another way to look at that is men are naturally yang, which is naturally giving energy, mas masculine. And women are naturally receiving feminine. That is a really big thing to actually understand. One very, very fundamental difference um, that between the two sexes, okay? Or not so much the sexes even, but the different energy. So men are giving heat, masculine. Sex center is hot. So in other words, your sex center is absolutely awake as a man naturally. That's why there's an old saying that men think with their cocks, not their brains. Then, their heart center is naturally cool. Men naturally have their heart shut down more. Women, yin, receiving cool feminine. Naturally, their heart center is hot. They're feeling emotional center. That's why they say women always think with their feelings. And many women go, man, that guy's such an asshole, yet I just keep going back to him. I don't know why. Or I don't know. I know that I shouldn't get attached, but I am attached. I'm, I'm in love with him and I shouldn't be. That's, that's because a woman's heart center is hot. There's an old saying that women give love to get sex. Or so give sex to get love. Men give love to get sex. And there's a lot of truth in that. A man gives love and connection. A man may have found, for example, sex is more food in masculine energy. A man can have sex and the next day he's immediately thinking about the next person. Women, when they have sex, they naturally, because their whole being is involved, they tend to bond. This is feminine energy at its purest. So when you get that, so man, if you're with a woman, for example, you want to really open a sex center and help her. And women, you want to open the man's heart chakra. So 
a tantra goddess knows this and that's what makes them so good they i remember this tantra teacher i worked with knew how to open my heart chakra really deeply she got me open and once the man's heart chakra opens the man then can open the woman's sexual chakra one thing for example they teach in tantra training in tantra training for women is what's called yoni massages which actually is giving a woman a massage in their pussy in the correct way and the way they do it a certain way where you rub yourself to actually open up the yin energy and women who've experienced this can, are often in shock as to what comes up the pain the grief the sexual wounds the emotional wounds the, because they actually say in tantra that when a woman every time a woman's had sex with a guy and they had their heart broken or left their energy the wounds remain within that area and they're still carrying the energetic wounds within that area of their body so when they first start having sex with a very tantric loving partner um, for example um, what uh, often happens is a woman suddenly feels this wound come up there's women who suddenly start crying during sex and they don't know why there's women who suddenly just want to run from a guy and they don't understand it because he's treating them really well and they want to run back to the toxic guy who they saw the other week and that's because the woundings and that remain in these areas so one of the big differences for a woman is to realize that that's why um, for men if you can treat a woman as a slow cooker and go slow with her and open up her yin energy and really um, allow her to open your heart and bring your heart out more and connect with her heart and then she starts to open up and then take the time to open up her sex center and don't rush the process you'll be astonished and pleasantly surprised at what you get out of it i know the number of times i was learning this i would be spending ages just opening it up and opening it up and after about 20 minutes i'll be going oh far out you know what's nothing's happening here i mean next minute the woman would be going like oh my god oh it's amazing and they would be like like starting to get into it and then there would be a loud scream and a powerful orgasm and i'd be like oh shit whereas other times i'd be feeling really turned on and thinking oh she must be feeling it and then i would realize actually she's not nothing's happening so it this is a whole new way of mastering energy so understanding this difference in men and women that's why one of the rituals in tantra is to work together um to share sacred space where a man and i can remember what i learned in tantra was before i had sex with someone i would actually really open up sacred space which means open up my my fears open up my woundings and what i was hoping to achieve or what i was hoping to experience and then she do the same very powerful tantric ritual to share what's called tantric space is the word where you share space together you open up and allow this to come forward one of the and it's really a great great ritual to really open up the heart learn to express your fears and experience deeper trust and it's very healing very 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 healing for the feminine and also for the masculine because believe you me we may look tough but i reckon men are carrying absolutely massive wounds in their heart today massive wounds and it's a very big ignored area in society still it really is and it's something where issues around domestic violence in women have been aware and the wounding around women but the wounding around the masculine as many great tantra white tigresses and dakinis will openly say is just being ignored so the feminine is like the ocean is another thing to realize in other words a woman is always in the now a woman could tell you to right now you're the most amazing man i've ever met in my life because you because you made her a cup of tea and now later she'll be saying to you you know what you never take you never think about me you only ever think about yourself you're such a fucking dickhead aren't you and the man just sits there going like what on earth happened there and it's not understanding that the women are actually in are in the now whereas for a man everything works in a systematic logical process and a woman says to him you know i really feel i feel close to you and you're a good man to me she goes oh wonderful and he just takes it at his word and this is another thing that men and women really struggle to understand <laughs> so classic so these are these are other things as well to really understand the other thing too is is that they found in studies that the average man speaks ten thousand words a day and the average woman twenty four thousand words a day so many a time that with men and women women get frustrated with a man 
who doesn't talk to him much. The reason that happens is that a man spent his whole day talking to his clients or in his work, whereas many women, especially when they've got kids and they're around kids who are grunting, for example, and don't talk much to them, they don't get to speak much. So the first thing they do is when they're with a man is just want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until the man's about ready to scream. So it's just a few little tips I've shown in here. Um, and yeah, these are the fundamentals. So one thing I've also put here is a connection between domestic violence and misunderstanding between the roles of the men of their sexes. Men by nature are physically stronger, women are emotionally stronger. According to my, one of my Tantra teachers, women are five times emotionally stronger than men naturally. So we have in society now a firm boundary for men not to hit women physically. But what many women don't realize is what is for them a soft hit, like which they might say to another woman, which is nothing to them, for a man is a really big hit. And many men are experiencing severe damage to their hearts because something for a woman that she might say was strength for the man, um, like a good example might be, God, you're just a typical lawyer. You only ever think about yourself. And they say it, whereas another woman might just laugh. The man might feel very wounded from that in the way she says it with the tone and the strength that she says it in. So one of the things now that women are learning to do through Tantra is how to, in the same way men are learning to refrain themselves from lashing out physically, women learning to refrain from lashing out emotionally. And I developed, I, I've had a firm rule for myself, I don't hit women and never have physically. But one thing I had to develop for myself was a firm rule that I would not tolerate a woman hitting me emotionally. And I had that happen in a few relationships. And I flipped that rule. Now I just don't tolerate it, so it never happens to me. But I'm like, this is how I expect to be spoken to. And I expect my heart to be treasured. And I will openly say to a woman, if you don't treasure my heart and you hit me hard emotionally, I will hit you back because um, I train myself to be emotionally stronger. But I said equally, I won't trust you. I will pull back from you. I will shut my heart off to you. So I actually express that boundary. Can any men relate to this, that you know you've been physically hit by a woman before? I mean, emotionally hit by a woman. Like, whether they meant to or not, but you've been really battered at times from the emotional hitting of the feminine. I'd be very surprised if most of the men here don't know what I'm talking about. Very surprised. Yeah. And if we're honest, men, it hurts. It really hurts. It actually hurts. We may pretend it doesn't, and we're expected to walk around saying like, ah, oh, we're tough, you know, you're a man, you're fine, get over it, mate. But really, it fucking hurts. I know it would really hurt me. And one of the reasons Grace and I get on so well, especially these days, is we just don't do that to each other. There were a time when we divorced, um, when we were going through that, that that did happen, and it did hurt. And it can cause damage. And there's an old saying in Chinese torture that if it takes a thousand cuts to kill someone. In other words, it's one by one. And likewise, you can kill the love or connection between two people by these little cuts and by this hit. But a man giving a woman a, a hit, which he doesn't kind of speak out about, and then but deep down, her trust has just been shaken. shaken. Equally, but a man who feels his heart's just been hit and he's going like, oh God. And he doesn't always know why. He doesn't quite make sense to him, but it hurts. I had a girl some years ago who I was seeing. And I remember at one stage, she just made a nasty little insinuation and then gave me a silent treatment for two days. And I remember when I tuned in, um, it really hurt. It actually really hurt. And eventually I just, I had to express it, but I noticed that my trust in her went right down. It went right down. And back then I didn't have the expression that I have now, but my trust just went. I was like, no. Nah. On the surface, I smiled. I said, yep, it's going great. But I just was like, no, nah. my trust was broken. And I'm a sensitive guy. I am. I cry easily. I feel it. And Isaac um, Flores is brave enough to say it made me tear up a bit just thinking about it. Yeah, look, mate, I, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I, I was shattered. I remember when, when one time a girl sent me this text and she just, it was just the nastiest text. And it was someone I just started to open my heart to. And I was just like, so as men, it actually really hurts. And it's a form of domestic violence. 
So this is something that is part of Tantra as well as a standard for, for women to learn not to hit the men emotionally, just as much as men not hit physically and men to learn to be able to express when you feel hurt and not be afraid to open yourself and let that come out. So it's good. You know, some of the men are being bold enough to admit that here. And I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get through all this today, but I did, I was going to talk about red and white Tantra, which I won't go too much into. I'm going to say red creates a deeper bond with your partner. White is more about a bond with yourself. So the main thing from that is that Tantra, it doesn't need to be of another person. And in fact, if you don't have good Tantra with yourself, you won't easily express it with another person. In other words, you learn to assimilate the masculine feminine energies within you. I mean, I'm very masculine, but I'm very feminine. I'm creative. I'm in my heart. I cry. I play music. I sing. I do poems. I create. I, I have a softness to me, a compassion, a tenderness. That's feminine. Um, a creative kind of out there, in the now kind of thing. Equally, I do have that masculine logic, linear structure, setting things up. Um, wild, wild side to me. And you can learn to switch on the tools as you need them. If I want intimacy with a woman, I work on the heart. If I find that I've overstimulated my intimacy, my sexual chakra shuts down, and that's when I start noticing I start to become more impotent. Not that it's a label I use, but my cock doesn't go up as easy. And all that tells me now, as I've learned from Tantra, is I'm overstimulating my heart, and I'm not stimulating my sexual um, area enough, my masculine side of things, or being physical. So, you learn after a while to balance the two energies. And women, by contrast, if you overstimulate your sexual side, or especially if women start getting into what I call a highly almost, um, where they start having sex with a lot of people a lot of the time, the one thing, although women have every right to do that if they choose to, in Tantra, what they do teach her, just got to watch that they don't move so much into their sexual energy, they start to switch on too much of their masculine side. So that's something that women have to watch. Just in the same way, men have to watch certain things as well. So Tantra is not so much about limiting choice. It's just about knowing what things lead to. And the white tigresses, for example, um, were an interesting um, group of women because what they would tend to do is they would have a very strongly stimulated sexual chakra. Um, but equally, they knew if they were doing that, they would heavily stimulate their heart chakra as well. So let's just explore Tantra a little bit more. It unlocks your chakras and opens them. The sexual healing was known in ancient temples, and that's why the men and women were taught to self-pleasure and the power of the goddess. That is why even in, um, there are some women who've experienced profound sexual healing through sex and through having the yoni massage and even having conscious sex with a man who puts a lot of love into them and they feel themselves open up and heal. So once you start to learn to open up your sexual chakra, you start to notice that you'll feel more energy and power. And even now you can actually tune into your sexual chakra. So if you go there in your energy, how much percentage are you open? When I first did this, it was only 40%. So just I'm out of interest. Explain that. So actually feel into that one and you can type in the chat what your first instinct is. By the way, yoni is vagina for women. A yoni massage means a vagina massage. It's a sacred name for a vagina, to give a good vagina massage. So if you tune in everyone, what do you sense? Like how open is your sexual chakra right now? I tune into mine, I reckon about 80%, 90% I'm open at the moment. Yeah, wow, close for one, 40% for another. Yep, 40% is a common one for men, 30, 40%. Anyone else or everyone's not brave enough to do that? Or just doesn't want to? Thirty, forty, sixty, fifty. 40, 60, 50. Yep. So you can always aim to actually get that even more 20. 
Grace totally opened just in a man. <laughs> you can do it with yourself. I'm sure, I'm sure you have plenty of offers, Grace, if you put it out there. Okay, so secondly, your heart chakra gets opened and finally your brain. So samadhi was when you can move it. So a good way to start practicing Tantra is to do that, to pleasure yourself and to actually move the energy through your sex chakra, through your heart and even consciously move it up into your brain. It actually does open up your third eye, by the way, and your pineal gland. Women who do this, they actually start to open up their pineal gland and really open it to that next level and really get this happening and really open. So basically balancing the masculine and feminine energies. So for me, I find as soon as I'm out of balance, something goes, something happens. If my sexual is too overstimulated, I either come too quickly. That's the first thing I learned in Santra. If you're coming quickly a lot, it means you're overstimulating your sexual chakra. And one of my secrets I learned to do is let's say that I'm masturbating or if I'm having sex with someone and I'm feeling my, um, myself wanting to come too quickly, what it means is I've just got to balance it out. So I will do a cooling kind of ritual, like subconsciously I'll move more into my heart and feel the connection with them. Or I might even start thinking about a football game. I'll do something deliberately to balance it out. Or I'll just... Um, focus on looking into their, looking at them. And sometimes I'm just feeling the connection so strongly that can, that can do it as well. So I will, there's a constant energy moving thing happening, happening in tantric sex, like the whole time with yourself. You're always feeling the energy. And as you know, men, that when that desire to come can come really fast, literally. Like you can be feeling like not much happening and like 30 seconds later, you are just ready to drop your blocks. And so when that happens, you've really just got to, um, it's very important at that moment that you can cool the energy. Equally women, you can do that with your partner too. If you can feel your man's about to, you can help him. Uh, and one of the best things to do is to pull back like a little bit, like stop moving or thrusting. If you feel it's about to happen too quickly, you just stop thrusting quickly. Um, because that will cause stimulate it. And the more you connect and tune into a, a partner's energy, you will feel that. You will feel it when the man's starting to get overstimulated. So in a way, it's a vicious cycle when you have what's called the two-minute wonders. The man is going hard, 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 but equally the woman is often stimulating it as well. And so that's another thing you can do. So Tantra teaches it's like a dance. You start to experience it like a dance. And if it's within yourself as a single person, same deal. Build up the energy and then cool it down. Build up the energy, then cool it down. For a woman, it's the opposite. Mantak Chia, who was a, a teacher of Tantra, used to say that a woman wants to experience as many orgasms as they can. A man wants to experience as few as he can and keep the orgasms internal. So I will often um, go for days and days and days and days and days and even weeks without coming and holding and holding and holding it. Especially if you're with a partner, the more you do that as a man, you will actually find your partner's attraction to you will build and almost this tension, the sexual tension is what builds the attraction, just keeps building and building until, you know, the woman's almost screaming out for the guy to come and the guy's almost screaming out and that builds attention and what makes it pretty good. And when you do that, and the quality of what you, you know, release is always much higher as well. So, like I said, this is not a G-rated um, webinar. It's maybe a G, R-rated, X-rated, maybe a G-spot webinar. Um, maybe a G-spot webinar. So ultimately the goal of Tantra is to balance energy within yourself and each other, overcome this polarity and create the yin yang. So it's another collapse of duality for those of you who learn about the spiritual side. So it's learning to balance the energy. It's another form of balancing it. So once you master this, so if you're a guy and you find it hard to, you know, avoid premature ejaculation, 
One thing you can do as well is just practice squeezing your anus muscle. Like you squeeze it, hold it for two seconds and let go. And you do that like 10 times. You squeeze your anus muscle like those cheeks, hold it for, for two seconds and let go. If you do that every day for a month, just do it like 10, 15 or 20 times to build up to, you will notice you'll improve your pelvic floor muscles. So that's one thing physically you can do that can help a little bit. Um, one thing I will give is a bit of a gentle warning. You can go too much to the other extreme, where if you actually hold your cum too much to the point where you just keep doing it, you can over excite your prostate as well and your prostate can get a little bit enlarged. So there is a balance, but you generally start to feel it. Um, you will know it. You'll know it if you're going too far because you'll just start to notice things like you'll um, urinate a lot more frequently than normal or something like that over a couple of days. And then all you've got to know is just to kind of give it a bit of a break and just um, even next time you have sex, just be comfortable, um, you know, coming a bit quicker than normal. So I like to balance it up. That's the whole point. It's a balanced diet. So when your energies are balanced and flowing freely, you can easily produce new ideas. Like, believe you me, you meet someone with a fantastic sexual energy. Um, and just so you know, for time, it's going to be finished within half an hour. So by 11 o'clock Perth time, um, which is one o'clock Sydney time, or like about 11 o'clock New York time at night. So we'll be finished. I'm going to be finishing to take questions in about 15 minutes, and then we'll finish off by going through what's available if anyone happens to be interested. So whether that's in business, whether that's a hobby or whatever else, um, things like that, um, it's all really good. So personal life, career, hobbies, finding a way to make money, it really does help you. My sales, when I've got my sex energy working well, I sell really easily. Having a better relationship around you, people attract to people with good, healthy sexual energy. Tap into your heart, space, and spirit with ease, and much more. So some X-rated tantric practices. Now, yab yum. This is a little bit of a joke Grace and I've been had, but seriously, this is a very great way to activate energy and balance the polarity between the heart and sex. So you can see what's happening, the woman sitting on the guy, and what it's doing is that by connecting their different chakras, the man and the woman connect their heart and sexual organs, and what they can do is they move the energy in a spiral. So the woman moves the energy down from her heart into her sex, she by, by her imagination, and then, then she moves it from her, um, her um, vagina into the guy's um, penis, and then, sub and then he at the same time is imagining the move up from his penis into his heart, into the woman's heart. And it's amazing what it actually does when you do that. You can actually connect um, your third eye as well. You can connect your eyes. So what you do is if you actually connect your foreheads like they're doing, that activates the third eye. Or you can actually look left eye to left eye as well. And that activates a deeper intensity of connection when the left eyes. So... So, um, as you can see here, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty hot position, this. I do agree. Believe you me, after you've seen this, once you try it, you'll love it. It's absolute, it's a beauty. Edward, you're, Edward, you're not ready for this yet, mate. Sorry. A yoni massage. Um, like I said, that's another thing. So for women, one thing that you can actually do, and I've had women in my life who've done this, they go and get one. You can, I've given it to girls, but you can actually go and get a professional yoni massage from a tantra teacher. And women absolutely love this. So yes, Sammy says she's had experience. They're absolutely fabulous. So, um, so having a yoni massage is really healing, like as you get your vagina massage. So Grace is loving this. Yeah, I knew you would, you little, you little dirty dog, Grace. But yeah, getting a, um, a yoni massage um, is fabulous for women. Um, and yeah, a tantra teacher or certainly from a partner or someone else. Um, so let's just have a look at some practical ways to start tantra as well. So yeah, Grace, we're going to get our sales up. Yeah, well, if you get your sexual energy stimulated, it will. 
So visualization, like really imagining is really powerful. Um, really powerful. So flow your sexual energy through your body from your thoughts and imagination and really feel it, practice it and imagine it. So I know what Steve Plummer is going to be doing tonight. Um, but yeah, you can just imagine that you can move it and um, allow it just to move between your different chakras. Feel the connection moving up from your sex chakra into your heart. And like I said, see how long it can expand and how long it can actually grow. So self-pleasure, and like I said, you can do it with self-pleasure. You can either focus the energy on yourself, you can imagine someone that you find attractive, that kind of stuff as well. That's another thing that you can do as well. So, oh, Steve Plummer's gone, I was giving him some shit. And this is especially important for women, but also for men. So women learning to do this really successfully is pretty damn powerful as well. So it's really good. The more times a woman orgasms, the stronger her life force gets according to man tech cheer. Now to any women here who are brave enough to admit they've had multiple orgasms and their life force feels fabulous when they really let rip, like, any women have done that or and really let rip where your whole body's shaken like convulsively where you're screaming. Have anyone ever had that? Women who have that reckon it's just like the best. Like mind blowing where you're screaming. <laughs> yeah, I knew there'd be a couple out there. <laughs> Grace, absolutely the whole neighborhood heard it. You're all talk, Grace. Yeah, guys, this is your manager of your of the business, you know, like I was like, Edward, you gotta gotta pull these women into pull Grace on the line. But yep, um, it's a really good one. So really, really good one. So the more times a woman orgasms the stronger. That's why it's important for a woman to regularly do this. By contrast, men must learn the opposite, as I've said that. And it's simply because the more orgasms, the weaker his life force gets. Now, men, you have noticed that if you come a lot or a few times, you start to feel weaker and drained in your energy. So energy increases through an orgasm for a woman. A man actually feels it leave his body. So that's why the internal orgasm, the other reason that's so powerful for both men and women, is as they feel the internal orgasm, they can move it up their body. I can remember one of the best internal orgasms I had. I literally shook. I felt myself coming inwardly, but didn't happen outwardly. And my body actually shook and the energy just rushed through my body and I could feel my head almost exploding. And that was when I had some spiritual experiences as well. So that's why it's a good lesson for men to learn and practice. So in the long run, a man has greater control. And as I mentioned, with a conscious partner as well. And I emphasize the partner which often we think is everything which we're searching for is actually the least of it. It really isn't a big issue at all. The partner's kind of like an optional way to really feel and express it. So men and women are the opposite when it comes to balancing. As I've mentioned here, the man's heart is more blocked and sexual is unlocked. And why men think of their cocks, where women the opposite, and that's why they think with their feelings. And finally, to finish with, we're now going to cover the three sexual paths before we take questions and go through. So we'll be finished in actually five minutes or so, maybe 10 minutes before we take questions and then go through the course. There's three different ways you can express yourself sexually through Tantra. One, which is the one that everyone knows about, is monogamy. Now, this is the thing that Western society is absolutely caught up with. And... Dr. John D. Martini in his book, Heart of Love, made a brilliant comment, and I've noticed this. If you, if you ever meet a woman who's, who says she's been cheated on a lot, you'll be guaranteed that she has an obsession with a soulmate. In other words, what he teaches is that what you're obsessed with, you tend to get the opposite with. Women who are looking for a soulmate always seem to attract a guy who want the many. In other words, if those who look for the one tend to get the many. Those who are happy with the many tend to get the one. Um, I am, for example, absolutely comfortable with the many. So I tend to get girls who look for the one. And that's because I tend to go for the many. And I don't have a problem with that. 
Someone who's obsessed with monogamy will tend to end up attracting people who want the many. So that's why it's very important to be balanced in all three and be comfortable with, whatever, with all three paths and see the, the pros and cons for each path because each of them do have their cons. The, the benefit of monogamy, for example, is you can build more sacred intimacy with, with someone if you do that. You can actually really center your energies, build a more sacred intimacy um, with that person. And you can build a more focused connection and you can put more of that energy into the partner and into building success in your wealth. The drawback of monogamy is, yeah, look, you definitely can miss out on the variety. You can definitely miss out on experience. You definitely um, can feel trapped at times or whatever else. So that's why in Tantra, true monogamy is a very conscious, voluntary, much desired choice. If you feel trapped in a monogamous relationship, then you're probably a lying monogamist. In other words, deep down, you really are a polyamorist or you're not wanting to commit yourself right now, but you're actually going against your truth. Either that or you are a monogamist, you love that, and, you, and the only reason you feel trapped is just because it's old stuff and you're keen to work it out and you will work it out. So keep in mind that most Western men and women are lying monogamists. Many men will tell their wives they love you and love you only. They never think about other women when it's a big load of crap. Equally, many women do that, and they do that because they don't want their husband to feel hurt. Men often feel threatened if they think their partner's attracted to someone else. Whereas deep down, and I've learned that you want to be very, 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 very open when it comes to this kind of stuff and own it as a man. I will openly own that. Ironically, right now, I mean, we're all in lockdown anyway uh, across the world, but I'm actually, sex is actually less of a part of my life than it's probably ever been right now because I just literally have so much going on in business. I'm so open with it. I can feel it astrally. Um, but I don't really want to go around and have 20 different women or even 10 different women. The thought doesn't particularly appeal to me. It would just be a headache more than anything else to me. So monogamy is one path you can go through. Another path, which I think is greatly missed out, is celibacy, which I know Grace, even though she carries on like a turner, has been living for a couple of years. And celibacy is actually... Many yogis, although who go on a deep spiritual journey, end up being celibate. And celibate doesn't mean you shut off sexually. It means you become more sexual with yourself. In other words, your sexual energy is reserved exclusively for yourself and your relationship with the divine cosmos. So in a way, I, I, I have a lot of tendencies of celibacy myself right now and that I'm moving a lot more into having sex with the divine consciousness, the divine feminine, and having a sexual union with that. And the more I experience that in the deep love and cosmic sexual union with the divine um, feminine, it blows my mind. And in fact, I find that it takes pretty good sex in the physical to even come close to what I experience cosmically now. You know, someone's got to be pretty good and be pretty open. So celibacy doesn't mean you turn into a monk who should cut your penis off or basically locked up your pussy in a chastity belt. It really means that your sexual energy is reserved for yourself and for the divine cosmos. So that's what it means. And finally, polyamory. I met a couple recently who become clients of mine and I'm so impressed um, by them. They're actually a conscious threesome. They literally are. They live as a triad, which apparently is one of the, was at one stage was the fastest growing relationship in, in America. A man who had two women living in the same house. He was married to one, the other one was a lover. And the woman and the two women got on like a house on fire and the two women would sometimes be intimate with each other and he basically got to have two different women and i must admit i just said to him mate i said you've got it all worked out i said God, i said good on you i said bloody awesome man in other words they just totally own their truth because he realized that he actually really liked this other woman um he was open with his wife and said i really i'm really attracted to her and she is to me so the woman was willing to talk it out and then she found she really hit it off with the other women. There was an article in the news the other week about this. There was a very conscious threesome couple. It's a very growing thing where we're, we're actually realizing this and many people are moving this path. So polyamory, that's one form of polyamory. Another form of polyamory like the, yeah, you know, you might be, um, you might have three or four. Polyamory, by the way, is a little bit different to being single um, and having lots of different women because polyamory 
isn't really about casual sex. It's, um, it's more about you may have two or three or four or five partners, but who you have an intimate connection with all of them. That's being polyamory. So in other words, you have amorous intimate connections with two, three, four, five people. So that's another legitimate path that you can actually explore Tantra with. But, but whatever path you explore on Tantra, I have to emphasize, it requires an openness of heart, an openness of spirit, and a really deep intimacy. So an openness, openness, openness of heart, an openness of spirit, an openness sexually, and really not shutting off your sexual energy at all and having a heart connection as well as a sexual connection. So that's one of the things with Tantra and one of the challenges I know in the modern world for men to face is that if you can't really have Tantric connection with someone that's fulfilling if you don't also have a heart connection. Many women who have still got a lot of shadows and wounds to deal with, or even men, those shadows just jump up and next minute they, their fears come up, their jealousy, their pain, their darkness, their desire to possess the, the, the man for himself or the man to possess the woman, their desire to be, um, yeah, that, that kind of jealousy, that fear, that fear of abandonment, all that stuff. Many women carry a deep fear of abandonment and many men carry a deep fear of losing their freedom. And many women also carry a fear of losing freedom and many men a fear of being abandoned. So it's, this is the, these are the wounds. The biggest two wounds that I'll finish off by saying is fear of abandonment and fear of loss of freedom. And I'd be very surprised if there's a single person on this webinar who is nodding their head, absolutely relating to what I've just said to you there. But you just cannot do that, you know? Fear of abandonment or a absolute deep, deep fear of being trapped or losing your freedom. Who can relate to that? Who can really relate to that? Come on, you must all relate to that. Yep, a lot of freedom. So, okay. Like I mentioned, many Westerners are lying monogamists. Finally, many Westerners think Tantra is all about sex. It's just only and simply a tool. It's about opening your heart completely and deeply and being comfortable enough. The greatest lesson I was taught by my Tantra teacher that changed my life because I was so afraid of opening my heart and being hurt. She said, it's not about opening your heart to the person. It's about opening your heart to the experience and realizing that the person is only a holographic um, being that you've created in your, in your reality to help you experience this. And that changed my life. It's about opening your heart to the experience. Diane Richardson even goes as far as to say that a true sexual connection in Tantra is even more important than a stronger heart connection, although she said you've got to have both. And the reason she said that there is a man came to her for counselling who had two women here that he loved. One he felt more sexually connected with, the other one he got on better with. And he actually said, she said to him, if you really just want to go with just one and you can't have both, then go more of the sexual connection because you can grow that and build an intense connection and you can expand and grow a little bit more. So that's another train of thought. Any questions before we go through and offer the program? Who's really enjoyed it? Okay. Sheldon, Isaac, Tamita, Colin. Christine, right, everyone's like enjoying it. So, okay, who would like to find out a little bit more, like I said, is there anyone interested at least hearing more 
about a possible course where you can actually focus on Tantra with the aim of opening your heart and mastering sexual energy a little bit better. So you can apply it in your life, your business, your relationships and dating life. By the way, for guys and women, you say you got tantric skills, you have a very great um, gift that, believe you me, Colin, I want to hear more of my wife divorced me. No, nah, we'll just start the journey with yourself, Colin. Not necessarily, you just start the journey with yourself. Yep, so there's a couple of people, anyone else? Yep, okay, so there's a few. So, I've, I'm basically, I came up with something, really just teaching the stuff which I learned today and going into it a little bit more. So just, I worked out probably about seven classes um, in terms of that. So what we would do is make a $25 US per week, as low as, so yeah, look, basically seven classes. I, like I said, I actually have no idea if this is something that will interest people. And it will, and I'll be frank with you, it's a whole new thing. So I'll be actually doing a, with the course, when I do this one, I will be openly um, saying to you that I'll be learning, that I'll be sharing as I go along. So it'll be a lot of it will be your input. So the good thing is you'll get a lot of say and we'll be evolving it as we go along. And really, if I've got a few really serious people here, even about four or five, I'm, it would be, like I said, I'm more than happy to do it because it's just something that I know how effective. So if there's four or five people who are really serious about this and mastering it, absolutely. So I got together some things that you will actually see what I see. Um, really mastering the sexual energy and balancing your chakras, better health, a greater integration. Even, even doctors now are saying the importance of balancing the sex, heart and brain center. Raymond Grace in his workshop actually specifically talks about that. So specifically does that. So integrating better relationship with yourself and people around you that are more fulfilling, accelerate your spiritual growth. And there's another thing as well and so much more. Week one, introduction to Tantra, the foundations, ancient history and origin to what it's all about. So this is a bit of an idea. Um, the week two is probably one of the greatest things in terms of understanding the difference between the monogamy, polyamory and celibacy and how to actually uh, uh, own all three paths in your life. And believe you me, this will transform your happiness of yourself and your ability to build a good connection with someone else. Um, moving to different channels, opening the heart more with yourself and with a partner, introduction to meditations, activations, ways you can study, things you can do, different other teachers who you can go to, and integration and reflection on all that you've learned. So, it's ending now, Helen, so it's literally pretty much got about a minute to go. So these are the things here, mastering your energy, clearing blockages, opening your heart for more fulfilling connection, a financial explosion, and a lot more. So really it's for people who are open-minded, you feel repressed in that area, you're fed up with bad decisions, you're an action taker, and you follow through what you learned. It's not for you if it's you're not if you're closed-minded, you feel very taboo, and you're not willing to take actions and really face your deepest, rawest wounds, fears, and failures in your life at some level. So if you're not willing to face that, it won't work for you as well. And it definitely works for healing, Colin. Yes, really does. Um, tantra teachers I've worked with are also very powerful healers. I mean, I spent a lot more than that. That's just giving you the kind of idea though, but I was spending about three to $500 per session, up to $500 per session when I was seeing a Tantra bikini just for one session. So what I'm gonna do is if people wanna do it, that's what we'll charge. Um, like I said, if we get a few people, I'll be happy to do it. If not, well, not for this time. I'm sure there'll be a better time when people are more ready for this, or I might just do 
a training for some of our um, current clients or high level clients who are already involved in um, what we're doing. So this is what you get. I always give a guarantee if people pay for it, simply because it's, um, if you do the first class and you change your mind and don't want to do it, just let us know and you can get refunded. If you do commit on this, um, yeah, look, I always offer a personalized session if people take quick action. If they don't, they don't get it. That's just because if someone takes quick action, I know they're serious and I'm very happy to have a one-on-one -on -one call with them and help them shift any blocks that are in their life and in the way. And that's something I'm really good at doing. So, and you get access to a course and our new membership site that we've just literally done. So, is there anyone interested in, in doing this? Just to give me a bit of an idea. Like I said, if there's a few people, great. Just type a yep, Max Keen, awesome, yep. Okay, I wanna just put the... Max Keen, yep, Kaylin Keen, Colin, yep. Isaac, yeah, Isaac, be great to see you again, mate. We've missed you, my friend. I have, I have been wondering where you've been up to. So I'm glad to see you've come home. So here we go. So here's the link. So this is what we've done up. Um, so all you do is you click on that link. Uh, you'll find it in the text chat. Um, this one here. You click on there. And then you just got to go through, fill out your details. You can choose either one-time payment or weekly payments and go in there and then you submit and you're in. So like I said, if you sign up today, um, no, you'll get a, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one healing and clearing session with you and that will fast track in a while as well. Um, if not, you come back a few days later, I'm still happy to give the membership site thing, but not the one-on-one -on -one session. So. We've launched our new membership site, that's why. It just got underway. Okay, any more questions before we finish? Um, Yeah, I'm actually excited to be doing this, by the way, everyone. I really am. I'm very pleased. I was hoping that a few people would sign up only because I'm actually keen to do something in this area. I'm, it's something that will be fun more than anyone else. So. So great. Max, Isaac, Kalen, Colin. Yep. Awesome, Isaac. Well done. Fast action, mate. Definitely look forward to helping you out and seeing as you were the first one to quick action, I'll definitely look after you and um, yeah, we'll give you a bit of a hand to get you moving, mate. Oh, Max. Awesome. Max, my remote viewing friend. So fabulous. This is going to be fun. We're going to be starting it either next week or the week after. I'll confirm the exact date when we're going to do it. But yeah. Yeah, Max, good timing. Got to get this stuff fed up. Yeah, look, Max, especially for you. I mean, you're, you know, I, I, mate, learning this stuff now as a guy in your 20, late 20s and 30s, a single guy, just turned 30, mate, give you, learn this stuff, mate, and you'll be the biggest stud and, you know, you'll just let every woman will want you and your problem will be you'll have to create an online funnel, mate, to filter them out an application for. So, <laughs> Max is extra keen. Yeah, baby. And for single women as well. Oh, yeah. Your only issue that you will find is that your sexual power and your heart power will become through the roof, especially for single women. You will just have literally guys after you like anything. So what you'll have to learn to do is how to build strong energetic things and how to manage that energy and you do don't worry you'll learn those tools um but yes 
women who are tantrically and in their heart and sexual energy, believe you me, they are, yeah, whenever I'm around a tantra goddess who knows what they're doing, you just, you can feel it as a guy and it just opens you up really quickly. And I had a client come to me a few weeks ago for a consult who, yeah, she's a tantra dakini. Um, and I was like, I thought this woman has to be a tantra dakini. I didn't know. And she told me straight away, well, yeah, I actually am. I open up people's sexual wildness. That's my, and a lot of men, she has a lot of men for clients. So fabulous. Any more questions before we finish guys? For me, I'm sensing that the church has created beliefs around sex to keep us from our power. For me, you have no idea how right you are and what you've just said. That is one of the most, I discovered this too. The church has really done this to limit people's power in that area and create a lot of guilt. So you're so right in what you just said then. So yeah, you are correct. If you actually study, even if you read it in the Bible, for example, um, in the Bible, but most of the men had other women, for example, um, they had more than one woman. It was more common. So it wasn't um, a big thing like that. Um, I might even do a live demonstration with a woman here next time. Who knows? Now I'm joking. But, um, that would be pretty funny. I do know a Tantra teacher who used to do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Isaac Plummer, maybe we can, you know, you can do a, a live demo, you know, maybe we can get you and, you know, you can meet up some. <laughs> Isaac, yeah, sure, yeah, Isaac, you worry me, mate. You should have been horrified. I'll have to tell you, I'll tell your father. <laughs> yeah, keep the change, our filthy animal. Um, okay, everyone. Well, on that, yeah, uh, learning sales exactly. Those of you who do sales, like Isaac Plummer and Isaac Flores, this will absolutely help you guys to, you know, you get a strong sexual energy. You'll notice how much more you'll sell. Um, do you remember Grace, that girl Danelle, who used to work for us, and she was very rigid, and we taught her to, to use her sexual energy, and she literally exploded, like in her sales. I think she increased by like tripled her sales or something within about a month. It was crazy. Colin says he can't see the payment option. Um, it's here, mate. Oh, I've got the screen in front of me here. One time payment or 27 payments. You're saying you can't see that? It's right there. Yeah, she was a stunner too. Yeah, she was. This is one little final thing I'll just quickly mention. Many hot women, I don't know if many guys have noticed this, are very sharp in their sexual energy. And there's actually a reason for this. They get so sick of having men, feeling men's sexual energy, looking at them and, and imagining fucking them, that they actually close off their sexual chakra to try and keep men out. And then when they get into marriages or relationships, they find it very hard to open it up again. And um, the guy who taught me Tantra, one of the men who taught me, um, in terms of more the um, practicalities of it, used to tell me many of his clients were women who had come to him and he would actually teach them to open that part of him again for their partners because he said many hot women are fed up with guys looking at them. So for some of you women, you may have experienced things like that when you felt guys' energy and it's learning to have energetic boundaries and letting your sexual power come through really powerfully and embracing it. So <laughs> Isaac, I experienced this. Isaac, in your dreams, mate. We've got a few smart, ass, smart asses who are part of our team on this webinar who are just <laughs> making all these comments. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you, everyone. And really enjoyed having you on. And I look forward to seeing those of you at the course who are joining it. See you there.